Hey everyone, this is Rachel, or Dolly Discourse, and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my Bee Goths or Bleeding Edge Goths collection. This is going to be my first YouTube video, and the reason I kind of wanted to make a channel in the first place is to talk about this underrated doll line. When I first got into collecting them, there was really no information out there, just like a few blog posts or videos from just a couple of creators on YouTube, so I kind of just wanted to add to the information out there about them and just spread the love for this amazing line, because this is my favorite line of dolls to collect. This is going to be in no particular order because I don't remember the exact order I got them in. I'm just going to go based on the order that they're displayed on this shelf and the, my other shelf and just talk a little bit about how I acquired them and the memories attached to each girl in my collection. So first I'm just going to start with the vinyl figures. I only have these three. Luna Bella Whispers, Druid from Series 2, and Cyberella Denial. Yeah, I only happen to have these three because they were a pretty good price on eBay and Mercari. Um, I would collect more, but these tend to go for pretty expensive, and I'm simply like not willing to spend a lot on a vinyl figure. I'd rather spend more on a doll. So that's all I have there. And real quick, I also have this one Bleeding Edge plush, the Kinder Size Goth uh, Grim Jim. I happened to buy this guy at like a real store. Um, there's a collector store in the town in which I live, which had a few Bleeding Edge Goths in the store and this plush, and so I just wanted to sort of like buy out the stock they had in that store that was related to Bigoths, and so that's how I got him. He was a pretty good price, but I usually don't go out of my way to collect the plushes from eBay. Okay, now we're going to get started with talking about the dolls. So on the bottom left here, we have Infinity Abyss from Series 4. This is a super cool doll. She has 13 piercings, which is I think the most they ever made, which is really cool. This was a great find because I think the daughter of Steve Varner, who's the creator of this entire series, actually found some old stock and was selling them on eBay for about $30 each, so that was a great find. And yeah, I just really love her. She's super punk and cool. Moving on, from, we have Devastatia from Series 4. This doll, I used to think, was a little ugly, not gonna lie, like her outfit, I didn't understand. But then over time, she really grew on me. Um, she's also pretty special to me because when I lived in my apartment in college, she was the first doll that I actually ordered to the apartment um, when I first moved in. So she was one of the first dolls I had to keep me company there, and she really spiced up my decor in my apartment. So that was cool. Here we have Serpentina Maria Sangria from Series 3. Uh, anyone who collects Bigoths knows that they can have issues with yellowing over time, and the main culprit for those issues would be all the Series 3 girls. So I was actually really lucky to find one that has a mild yellowing instead of like severe yellowing. She's still a little bit yellow, but it doesn't bother me too much. Yeah, and she was a really good find on eBay, only about 30 bucks. Um, and I really like her because she has snake eyebrows and snake eyes, so she's cool. On the top row here, we have these two Series 7 girls, Olivia O'Lantern and Katarina Moreau. These were an amazing find because, again, if you guys collect these, you know how hard it is to find these Series 7 uh, girls because they're just really expensive and rare usually, but they were both only about $40. Um, so yeah, this is when the faces started to get a little softer, but they're really pretty and really good quality. Okay, ta-da! So now we're gonna start talking about the back row. On the left here we have Raven, one of the Series 1 originals. She's just super cool, had a really unique makeup look. She was like the second one I bought, I think, um, on eBay, back when the prices were not that bad. They've inflated lately, but... Next we have Lillian, another Series 1 girl. Uh, this is the variant with the red belt and no red lining on her cape. There's like three variants, I believe. Uh, yeah. Once again, the really neat face makeup when they were doing cool things with their eyes all the time. So I'm glad I have these OGs. And here we have Susie Sun Full from Series 2. Uh, the only, perhaps, Asian doll, I hope she is, at least. Yeah, um, the rest of them are all white, which is unfortunate, but this one perhaps adds a little bit of diversity. So that was really neat. Ooh, and here we have Lolita Sun. Apparently she was a Figures.com exclusive, which is cool. I wish I could have been on that site back in the day. But I really loved her because she had this pink ponytail, and she's just really pretty and giving the side eye. So. And now we have the next row, starting on the left with the iconic Sinstress. Um, her sticker fell off, but I know her name. Um, she is probably the most horror-themed, sorry about the light, 
horror themed doll they ever made with these really cool black eyes but it's because her eyes are closed is how it gives that illusion but she's just so like goth and just really eye-catching another series one girl is malice who i'd consider one of the most iconic like main characters uh just because i feel like this is like the essential be goth uh, i really love her outfit the pleather and then these beautiful black and white tights yeah she's super cute And now we have a very special doll to me. This is Angelina Blasphemina. She was my very first Begoth I ever bought. And it was from that store I mentioned earlier. That was a collector store in my area. Um, I actually saw her in that store and that's how I was introduced to this line in the first place. And that was just a life-changing moment for me. So I pretty much like saved my pennies. Like I was uh, young at this time. <laughs> and I saved up, it was only like $30 <laughs> and I bought her from the store and hence started my full-blown obsession, and she's awesome. Well, this is pretty tall. I'm gonna get a chair. Be right back. So these two up here are the Series 8 girls I have, Gloria Phobia and Silent Storm, who is apparently a Comic-Con exclusive, which is cool. She comes with a couple possible dress colors, but I got the silver version. Um, This was an amazing serendipitous find because I did find them in the wild at a store in Los Angeles called Oz, if anyone's ever heard of that store. And I was just roaming, did not expect to see these in the wild, it's a very rare. But I was lucky enough to find these two for literally $6.99. It was so, so lucky. So those are awesome. Okay, the last dolls in my collection we're going to talk about is my out-of-box. I have four more out-of-box dolls. Um, yeah, let's get into it. It's me. Yeah, don't mind the Lilith in the background. That is a Living Dead Dolls fashion victim. Um, I can talk about those another time. So I decided to take them out of the case because there was a mirror in the back. It was just sort of awkward. So first we have the original Storm. She is definitely the main character of the Begos franchise because she got her own version in every series. And this is the OG. She came to me only with the backing of her box. So I just took her out and she's amazing in or out of box. This is a really cool um, find because this is Siphon Veins, who was also a Comic-Con exclusive, I believe, and I actually found her in box at that collector store that which I was talking about. Um, yeah, and the box was actually very damaged, so I decided to take her out, and I don't regret it at all, oops, because her hair ended up coming out even more beautiful when she was out of the box, and she's very rare and cute. Next we have Series 3, Scorpio Vixen. This is by far one of the most beautiful dolls in my collection. I just love her red colors. She stands out so much. Just honestly, like, one of my favorites. She's just a classic, really beautiful. And yeah, she's not very yellow either, which is super lucky. And last but not least, we have series two, Victoria Creeper. And this is the pink haired variant. Found her out of box on eBay. Um, I snatched it because I preferred the pink haired variant. She's just really cool goth, essential, what more could you ask for? So yeah, that's my entire Bleeding Edge Goth collection. I'm happy to shine some light on these amazing dolls. Comment down below if you collect these or what you think. And thank you for watching!